<laughs> well, hallelujah. We praise you, Father God. We give you all the glory. We're here to worship you. We're here to learn from your word. We're here to learn how to really live life the way you intended for us to live it. And uh, we just give you all the glory of sticking with uh, the love theme here with the songs we have today about going deeper, closer to the Lord uh, in his love and, and learning so much more about him and seeking out his love and proclaiming that uh, everything he has for us is all we need and, and then singing about his perfect love. Hallelujah.
for the love of God. Can you say amen? His love is a perfect love. Glory to God. Amen. We turn around and greet somebody and tell him you're glad to see him this morning. And Brother Bill, remind me I need to ask you something at the church concerning um, uh, song show. Okay, I'm going to see if there's something we can do. There's an idea I had. I just want to know. All right? So, but I, if I don't ask you to remind me, I might forget, and then I don't want to forget. So I'm standing up here going, oh, I wonder if we can do this. Hallelujah. Not that there's not anything wrong with what you're doing. It has nothing to do with that. It's just I want to I want to know if there's what I'm thinking can work. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good to see everybody. You know, and we're I know we got a bunch of folks out this weekend. It's getting close to being the end of the summer for the school kids. And um, but we got people working uh, that that weren't planning on working and people out of town at weddings. Penny's in Pennsylvania at a wedding. Hallelujah. And so um, and so we we miss all those who aren't with us this morning. And uh, I hope that some of them have been able to join us on Facebook live uh, on our live streaming. We, we praise God that we can offer that and they can get in on the service. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? All right. Uh, update. Janie, Janie had the surgery this past week. We're looking at it. As, and and, and our, our hope is this is the last one. Hallelujah. And, uh, but it, it went really well. It was, it was uh, minor in comparison to the other ones. And, um, and she is, she's here. She's, you know, she's, um, she's, um, recovering, and it kind of came up on some real quick. Went to the doctor just to kind of see when they were thinking about doing it, and they said, let's do it, boom, and here we're done. It was like, it wasn't like one of those things you had, a, a, you know, three, four weeks to plan on it and get ready for it. It was just a couple of days uh, to kind of get ready for it. So praise the Lord. Amen. So amen. But she's doing well, and uh, she's here, and, um, you know, so it's just praise God. Amen. Can you say amen? Glad, glad all y'all. I think everybody that's here was at our at the picnic last week, and I uh, hope y'all had a good time. I think it went really well. How many like the uh, Gibson Park uh, versus uh, Jamestown Park? Uh, I, I kind of think you know um, that shelter in particular, it's right next to the bathhouse, right next to the playground. Um, it's a little more isolated from the road and everything, um, so it was really you know nice by there. Although I mean it was still warm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. But, you know, we, we, we uh, missed all the rain and made it up for it this week. Woo! Glory to God. Can you say amen? Oh, that's right. We just, got, we just got Sunday covered. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, um, I, I'm beginning to wonder if we're going to have to use snorkel gear to get in this morning, uh, the way it was going. Oh, my, 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 my. It rained and rained and rained. And I am telling you, I was out driving around a couple of times, and, and um, well, Jan we had to go to, um, had to go back for a follow-up visit for Janie, um, uh, with, and uh, we went, went um, no, we went, we went for the, the surgery on Thursday. That's right. I mean, it was like uh, in at 730, on the road by 1030, uh, home by 1130, um, you know, and we ran into some rain. I'm, I'm talking 
It's like you were under a, a huge aquarium where they just, the bottom busted out. You're riding, and then, whoo, you can't see a thing. And, and I had that happen yesterday, riding, or the day before yesterday, riding on, on Guilford College Road. I'm riding along, there's nothing. And next thing you know, I can't even see where I'm going. It's just, pow. This, this system had a bunch of water in it. Oh, my, 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 my. And the dogs are not happy. They can't get out and play. Oh, my. Was it messed up your... your, your we just went to see Gabby Tripp. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. But I hope you all enjoyed our, our fellowship last week, and, um, and, and praise God. It's always good to get together, and uh, we'll be doing some things in the fall. Um, I, uh, last fall just didn't work out for me to do the uh, Down East Barbecue. Um, I think the weekend we were going to do it, I, was at, I had gone in the hospital, <laughs> so that kind of messed that up. And... Uh, but, you know, I was, I was, I was sitting there uh, this past few days. I keep, I keep looking at my toe going, I got a toe. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to have a toe. Amen. Glory to God. So, um, you know, we, we may look for, uh, it's, it's just a lot of work, obviously, to do the down east, and, and, and I don't have as much free time as I used to, but I, I still want to do it. Uh, people look forward to that. Friends of the ministry look forward to that. Friends of me look forward to that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, I got a whole, a whole staff at where I work, um, you know, look forward to that. <laughs> I got carried some in one day for one of our, uh, we have a kind of a covered dish once a quarter or something at, the, at work. And um, they, uh, some guys had eaten at Parker's before they went. And I, got, I took corn sticks to them. I kept my little thing cooked at my home. And they were like, they're just sitting there in the morning, just <laughs> sucking them down. Hallelujah. Amen. So praise the Lord. So we'll, we'll look towards doing it, okay? That would mean, though, I would need some help. If you're willing to help us, we could probably pull it off, all right? If you're not willing to help us, I probably can't pull it off. I'm, I'm going to need help, you know, doing all the stuff. Amen. Glory to God. I know you will. Praise God. Um, let's be praying for all those in, in our midst that, you know, are busy and, and can't get to church for whatever reasons are going on right now and just love on them and love on their families. Praise God. Uh, I talked with one of my Raymond ministers yesterday, and they have lost five relatives in the past year. Mom, aunt, uh, cousins, I mean, stepsisters, God, uh, godmothers, I mean, five family people in the past 12 months. And, uh, you know, and, um, and you got another one that's on the verge, you know. And so um, that, that's, that's a drain on you. You know, in an emotional way, you know, you just have to keep, keep trusting God. They said as soon as this is over, they're going back out on the mission field. You know, they do short-term missions, and so they, but they've been tied up with family for a year. So, uh, people out there, we want to give them, give them answers, and give them hope, give them life, minister to them, Amen. With our life and our light, you know, this little light of mine. Well, that's a great big light, really, because Jesus is the light of the world, Amen. Hallelujah. All right, it's time to give. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. Otherwise, if you're giving electronically, you can go ahead and send that. Um, Jessica's going to put out there online how to give electronically. Um, you can give either through PayPal. We have a PayPal account. Um, and then you also can give through uh, Cash App. Um, and that, you know, those are our electronic means. <coughs> and um, we thank God for the ability to do that. It's, it's kind of nice to be able to pull that off. Amen. And, um, you know, not have the, uh, some of the issues of waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Some people just, you know, you're out of town this week, there it goes. And it's there. Amen. And, that's, and, the, and the church loves that because we get to keep doing what we're doing. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? All righty. Praise God forevermore. And uh, now, Jesus said, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom. We thank God for the ability to give. We thank God for the promises of God to cause blessing to come. And we thank God that we're able to walk in the land to full supply, overflow, and plenty. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the tithers and the givers now. We thank you for those who are giving here locally, those who are watching and, and are, are, are sowing seed into the ministry. We thank you you're blessing them. And we thank you that people are blessed because they give into the kingdom of God. And we cause return to come unto them in Jesus' name. And everyone agree with that by saying, Amen. All right, go ahead and receive that others in Jesus' name. Or usher. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We don't get as much coming in now as actual, you know, uh, gifts because so many people give electronically now. It's like, um, you know, they'll, they'll buzz us up. Buzz, 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 you know, praise the Lord. Well, that's all right, too. Amen. All righty. Um, 
And then we're going to dismiss Children's Church and youth. You are dismissed. Youth has returned. And, um, huh? What now? I can't hear you. College age. Youth and college age. Youth. Young people. Yeah, you the college thing. All right, so you guys. I guess Shannon's going. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Praise God. Isn't God good? Amen. Now, if you're watching and, <clears throat> and you want to be a part of giving to our ministry, it would be a blessing to us. And, um, you know, we, we don't require it. We, we, we broadcast for free. We pay for the equipment. We... Uh, uh, we purchase the equipment so we can reach people and minister to people. Um, but those who have and can, uh, it would help us be able to do more and reach more uh, around the world. Uh, we have people around the world watch us. And so it's an exciting thing to be able to minister to people in other countries. Uh, one, one letter we got one time was it, there was a church taking our services and using it and showing it to their Bible study every week. Um, glory to God. So, I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, you're investing in touching the world when you do that. And so uh, if you want to be a blessing, you know, go ahead and, and partner up with us and help us out um, when, whenever, whatever God puts in your heart. And if he does, if he doesn't, and you don't want to do it, that's fine. We still love to have you come watch us and be a part of what we're doing. Amen? You know, uh, God blesses people. And when, you know, and if, and if you have in your means to give and God, and, and, and you, it's in your heart to do it, it's a blessing. Amen? If you're, if you're in a place you can't, and, and, you know, that's fine. We we understand that. Um, that's why we're here is to help you, amen. But you know those who are at a point where they can, that helps us help others, and uh, we we appreciate that. Glory to God, amen and amen. Glory to God. Well, go ahead and open your Bibles again to the uh, Gospel of John. We are ministering out of the Gospel of John. Um, we uh, started last week in John chapter thirteen, and uh, just to kind of do a slight recap. It says here, you know, in John 13, 1, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And um, we know that during this 13th chapter we have the, uh, the event, you know, that Judas, Satan had put into his heart to uh, betray the Lord. And, um, and you know, the devil having put into the heart of Judas, Iscariot to betray him. And then all this goes on, and then Jesus talks about, you know, the one that stops with me, he's going to betray me. And then Satan entered into him. And, um, but we have here, um, Jesus knowing he's about to depart. And I, this, this is our kind of a recap here again. Jesus knowing he's about to depart, and he's sitting with the disciples at the Passover meal, and his heart is heavy. Um, and heavy in the fact he has to get to them the most important things he can say to them before he leaves. And so he takes this opportunity, and we have about two and a half chapters of him talking to them. And we could call this his last sermon. We call it the Last Supper. It's really his last sermon, okay, where he, he gives them his final instructions. He's leaving. Now we know he comes, he's raised from the dead. He spends time with them, ascends into heaven. But this is where he has them together, sits them down, tells them of the future, tells them what's going to happen, tells them what's coming. And, and, and then says that, but then, and gives them final instruction. And um, what we found in this, in this final instruction, um, we sat, found in verse 31 of chapter 13, therefore when he was gone out, G, that's Judas had gone out to betray him. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God all, shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you, and you shall seek me, and as I said unto you, unto the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, now where is he going? He's going to pay the price for man's sin. We can't go there. Nobody could go there with him. Only Jesus could go that place and pay the price for man's sin. Okay? They couldn't come there. Okay? Um, so whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say unto... Um, he says, and so little children, yet a little while I am with you, you shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say unto you. Here he goes. First thing out of his mouth. He's got him here. I'm, I'm leaving. Here's what I'm going to say. A new commandment. 
Now, we said this is new in quality, not necessarily a non-existent commandment. And I know that because we know in the Old Testament that one of the, uh, one of the top ten, we call them the Ten Commandments, the top ten <coughs> is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, your neighbor as yourself. But Jesus is a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. Now, wait a second. We're told the commandment. We're to love our neighbor as ourselves. But here's where the ad addition comes on. Here's where the addendum comes on. Here's where the clarification, as I have loved you. It's not just you're loving out of, um, out, of, out, of a, out of law. You're to do it the way he did it. Amen? Amen. Um, as I have loved you, that you love one another. By this shall all men know you are my disciples, if you have loved one to another. And so here we are. Jesus tells them that he wants them to love one another like he loved them. And um, I'm trying to remember, how far did we get last week? Anybody remember how far we got last week? Did we get into chapter 14? We did not. We stopped kind of at the end of chapter 13. I thought we did. And, um, you know, then Simon says, you know, you keep saying you're going to go somewhere and we can't come. I'll go wherever you go, you know. And Jesus says, you're going to betray me. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to deny me three times for the clock, the cock crows. That's heavy. But then he starts out in verse chapter 14. He says this, let not your heart be troubled. He tells him, but don't be troubled. Don't, listen. And you, you can imagine Peter, oh, stick the foot in the mouth, Peter. Cut the guy's ear off, Peter. Hello? I mean, Peter is, is quick to react and slow to think. Always. I mean, you kind of get the idea Peter's like Rocky. Lord, I'll, I'll go wherever you want to go. I'll, I'll cut the ear off for you. I'll be there, Jesus. Adrian! <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, Peter's just, just, just kind of a rocky kind of character, you know? And um, so Jesus, <laughs> Jesus tells him, you're going to deny me. And he comes right back and goes, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father are many mansions or dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Then Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And then Jesus, we use this scripture all the time. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now let me say something. For all those who want to say that Jesus is one of the many prophets of, of, of religion, you know, that Muhammad and that, you know, the Hindu gods and the, you know, Muslim gods and the, you know, the Moonies and whatever other religions of the world, he's just one of many prophets. No, Jesus is either who he said he was or the biggest liar that ever walked the face of the earth. He made it clear, I'm the only way. He didn't say I am a way. He didn't say there are many ways. He said there is one way. I'm the way. So we, you know, we just cut through, the, we cut through the stuff, and here it is. Jesus is the only way. Either we can deal with that, you know, and, and that's where faith comes in, because you either have to believe that or not. The sword cuts. It's just this is the way it is. If you had known, listen to this. If you had known me, you should have known my Father, and from henceforth you should know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and sufficeth us, or is enough for us. And Jesus said, have I been with you so long, and you have not known me, Philip? He that seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest then show us the, the Father? Now, Jesus tells him, he says, if you want to see the Father, look at me. Now, what Jesus is trying to get the church to do is, the people want to see Jesus, look at us. He wants us to get there. You can't do it bashing people on Facebook. Hello? Slamming, slamming you know, your political perspectives on Facebook. You're not going to let Jesus be seen through you that way. And you can talk about shouting all you want to on Sunday, but like we said last week, if on Monday you're bashing the president and everybody doesn't agree with your political uh, position, you're, you know, and of course, this is now not just this current administration, the previous one and the next one coming, whatever. If all you can do is slam and bash, people aren't going to see Jesus in you. And then the world comes up and tells you what Jesus would do. They don't have a clue what Jesus would do. Hello. Y'all here, you're going home. 
You don't take the world's idea of what love is and what God's like and then act on it. They don't know what they're talking about. Y'all here, you're going home. But the church can't get together. Are you here? Um, for I've given you an example. Oh, nope, that's the wrong one. Okay. Believest that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sakes. <clears throat> and then what Jesus says. Listen to what Jesus says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do, and greater works that he, than these, because I go unto the Father. Now stop. Jesus, again, is trying to tell his disciples, you've got to be like me. Live with you for three and a half years. You've watched me. You've been with me. You've seen me function. You've seen me operate. You've seen how I've done things. You see how I dealt with political issues. He didn't. He didn't get involved in it. Hello? Not publicly. I'm sure he had opinions about uh, Roman occupation and stuff, but he didn't deal with that. Amen? He taught them how to function and survive in it. You can pray things out, but you're not going to, I mean, you know, you can't have anarchy and get out of it. We're, we're, our country is in places just to sin if you're anarchy. I mean, it's, it's just it's getting bad. And tr Christians are jumping in there, and, and ministers are getting involved in it. And, you know, I mean, they had a place not too long ago, that the ICE out in, out in Oregon, in, in one city out in Oregon, the ICE headquarters had a bunch of people surround it and start threatening and all that stuff. They called the police. The employees called the police, and the mayor told the police to stand down, wouldn't help them. They were federal employees, refused to help them. They had to stage federal police come in and, and arrest people and, and get the people out. And the, and the mayor of the city refused to allow the police department of his city to help because he doesn't agree with ICE. Hello? And they're, they're, they're put these, publishing these people's addresses who work for these places. Some woman had a food cart, and she fed the people in the, in the building, and they've, they've gone after her. We're descending. Now, the problem is that that's the spirit of the world, but it's coming into the church. It's gotten into the church. There is such an anger in the church toward people who have different opposing political positions that we can't, we, you couldn't find Jesus in the midst of that no matter what. It's got to stop. Amen? We're, he's, he, he's saying, you know, what we do and how we act is supposed to be because we're looking at Jesus and looking at the Father, and they're working through us. And I can tell you the stuff that I'm seeing, the God ain't got nothing to do with it. You can say he does, but he doesn't. The Father has nothing to do with, you, with your anger and your hatred and your vitriol towards other people, Christian or non-Christian. Amen? Amen? Now, just because I disagree with what, now, I don't agree with homosexuality. I don't believe, I believe the Bible calls it sin, just like it calls adultery sin, and just like it calls stealing sin and murdering sin, okay? I believe all that is sin. And I don't, but just because I, I say it's sin doesn't mean I hate you. As a matter of fact, my love for you compels me to tell you that it's sin, that you need to repent so that you, you can be delivered and go to heaven. Hello? Not because I hate you. I'm not a homophobe. No more than I'm a pedophobe. Hello? I don't have pedophobia. Hello? That's the new thing now. They're already changing. They're already trying to get laws passed. There are already people working behind the scenes to change from pedophobia to, uh, or to be from pedophiles to minor attracted adults. That's the terminology. I've been saying this for five years now. Now some people are starting to get a hold of it, but it's been going on for about five years. The, the terminology changed. Psychological journals and publishers are publishing the term minor attracted adults. Now if I come out and say it's wrong, you know, in five years, we could be at the point where there are people are screaming and throwing stuff at me saying I'm a pedophobe. I got pedophobia. Hello. Are you here? Or are you going home? Now, that spirit is working in the world, and it's infiltrating the church. Are you here? When Jesus is saying, hey, you're supposed to be doing my works, 
and greater than these shall I do, because I'm going unto the Father. You're supposed to be out laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. You're supposed to be getting the sick healed. You're supposed to be preaching the truth. You're supposed to be sharing life with people. You can't share life with people when you, you, you hate them because they're a different political party. Now, this, I'm, not, I'm not preaching in Europe right now. I'm preaching to people in America. All right? It, it's, it's, it's crazy. Now, this, I know some things are going to have to descend in absolute nutbagness because, uh, because the, 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 you know, the son of perdition has to be revealed. There's things that are going to take place. The one world government is coming. You know, Jesus is going to come back. The church is going to be raptured. There's going to be a battle for the end of all things. I know that's all that's coming, but, you know, we have a job to do until he gets here. And we're getting caught up in things that is causing us to be ineffective, and we're not doing the works of Jesus. We're not doing the works of Jesus. Now, we get so caught up on making sure that illegal aliens can get into the country and get on our, our, social, our, our, our welfare system that we forget to be going out, and we're supposed to be helping feed the poor. We're, and I don't mean that all the church does is feed the poor. We're supposed to be preaching to them. We're supposed to be doing things as, as the kingdom of God. We're supposed to be ministering to the hurting. Well, we want the government to do it. The government's not God. Government, if the government takes the place of the church, it will become the church. And you'll have a communist country. And you go into the communist countries, and the state church was, is, is, is atheism. I've been in the countries where communism fell. I saw 70 years, 70 years, the effects of 70 years of communist rule. I talked with people who lived under that, been in their homes, of what communism did to their country, what it did to the, to the individuals, what it robbed them of. Oh, yeah. I sat, I sat in their homes and talked to them in, the, in these uh, former Soviet bloc countries. It's an evil system. And it, it, it's state religion is atheism. Well, they had churches, and they were run by agents of the government. They kept an eye on everything. Well, that went over big. Okay. But Jesus said, if you believe on me, the works I'm going to do greater than these, because he goes into the Father. Then he says this, and we always want to use the Scripture for getting stuff from him. Whatsoever you ask shall I ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in, my, in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Stop. What, is, what was the context of that? Doing the greater works. It wasn't getting a new car. Now, I believe that God, you know, that we can use our faith to believe and receive and get and, and, and receive the blessings of God. But really, in this context, this scripture is talking more about, you know, us being light to the world and, and doing the works of Jesus and ministering to people and getting them healed and getting them delivered and setting them free than it is about another car or another house. Hello. Are you here? You've gone home. Now, one of the excesses of, of, of the prosperity teaching in the past 20 years has been it's been all about me. And we, and, we got, and, and we disguised our selfishness under the guise of, i got to be blessed to be a blessing, and that is true to an extent. But you've got to temper that. Yeah, that has to be tempered so that it's not just you getting blessed because you want to have and be on Robin Leach's The Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous remake. Hello. God wants to bless you. Let me say something here. There is something about the heart of the believer and what its attitude is that governs a lot more than we've said and taught. Because Paul wrote to the church at Galatia and said, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. And he's saying here, it doesn't matter if you're a natural born Jew or not. Was in Christ Jesus. He said this, but faith which worketh energized, empowered by love. Galatians 5, 6, I believe. Okay, somewhere over there. Either 5, 6 or 6, 5, something like that. Okay. In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything or uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. What's that? The attitude behind, the attitude of the heart has more to do with the governing of your faith than anything we understand. Amen. And the attitude of the heart of the believer under the new covenant is love. 
This is the governing factor of the heart of believers. So Jesus says, the work, because I'm going to the Father, the works I do shall you do, and greater than these I go to the Father. And I say that whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. You know, if you ask uh, um, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Wow. But when we tie that into doing the works of Jesus, we understand we have to become more about out of us than us. We have to become more external than internal. Extroverted in, in, in our Christianity and our walking with the Lord than introverted. There is a season for the introversion, the intro, introverted mindset where we're getting things straight in our lives so we can become effective. But not 40 years later. Amen? I mean, people, you know, a lot of times people come into, you know, a church like ours and they come in and they got all these problems and they just want to get fixed and all they ever think about is getting fixed and having this and getting rich and, you know, and we do our seminars on how to get rich overnight and how you can have what you say. And I believe, listen, Brother Hagin wrote a book on how you can have what you say. That's all true and it's all biblical. Thoroughly scriptural. But we can't leave out the underlying motivation factor and why we do and what, where we go in the, in, in the governing factor of our lives, which is the love of God. Amen? I, I, I'll be honest with you. Some of the people say things that I just, you know, make me cringe, you know, in, in the arena of excessive grace teaching. Uh, or, and it's not even grace. It's, it's out of balance teaching. It really is. It's just out of balance. It's, probably, it's more like licentious teaching. Because Jews said that people have been evil men have been crept in unawares and turned the grace of God into lasciviousness, licentiousness, wantonness, unres being unrestrained. We've got a whole generation in the church now that wants to live unrestrained. But the Bible says that the love of God constrains us. Now, wait a second now. You can't say because I can do anything I want to because God loves me. The Bible says that his love will constrain you. It will temper you. It will, it will corral you. Hello? Y'all hear you going home? Amen? And so when we come and we're going, oh, whatever I ask, I get. But, but whoa, whoa, whoa. And grow up a little bit because a lot of times it's because you're childish and you're, you're, you know, you've got a new toy, you've got a new Tonka toy. And you're excited about playing with it, you know. Um, but you know, there's a time it comes that you got to do away with the Tonka toy and, and get real about life. Amen. And things become, you know, as a Christian, we are to grow. We're to mature. We're to come into this, to a, a mature believer. Okay? And we give, we have to, we give people leeway to grow. They have to, we got to give them room to grow. I get that. <clears throat> but when the ministers are feeding the immaturity, that's a problem. When we're not giving structure to grow in. Amen? You take a, you take a baby Christian, they should go into a foundations class because they need, they, they need to learn things so that they can handle you know, they're, still, they're still drinking milk. They can't handle meat. And our pastors should be preaching meat to the congregations and not just milk. They've got to have something more. Amen. We can't keep having feel-good messages where everybody just feels good when they come in they leave. And, nothing's, and there's not a challenge to change and to grow. And to what? Take all this faith you learned about and all this power you got and think about doing the works of Jesus. Not just running the devil out of your house, not just having your, 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 you doing well, but having the power of God that you, when you ask the Father to heal this person and to deliver this person, to cast the devil out of that person, he does it. And you're doing like Jesus did. Amen? This is the next verse, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, we said last week the commandments of the Lord are his. Now, if you'll go back to the book of a Psalm, the 119th Psalm, the Word of God is referred to in numerous different ways, but every verse of the 119th Psalm makes a reference to the Word of God. Statutes, commandments, 
dictates, um, um, ordinances, all, whatever all the different words are used in the 119th Psalm, they're all referring to the Word of God. Commandments, statutes, sayings, law, are all referring to the Word of God. So when we see the word here, commandments, it's God's word. Keep my words. Keep my law. Or Jesus came to get rid of the law. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. Now, we're not under the ordinances, but Paul wrote and made that clear and brought revelation there that we're not under the carnal ordinances of washings and that kind of stuff. But those were, those were things to symbolize the spiritual moral codes and, and dictates of God. They had to wash to be able to go into the presence of God. We've been washed by the blood of Jesus, praise God. I don't wash anymore like they did under the ceremonial washings. I've been washed spiritually. Amen? But that doesn't mean because I've been washed spiritually, I can violate God's moral code. If I love Jesus, if you love me, keep my commandments. Notice he said commandments, plural. Then he said back up in chapter 13, verse 34, a new commandment. But then he comes back and says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my sayings. Keep what I've taught you. And remember when the Holy Ghost comes, and we'll read this later. He said when the Comforter has come, or the, the Paracletos is come, Paraclete has come, he will come and he will bring to, your remembrance all th bring to your remembrance all things I've said unto you. He didn't say when the Holy Spirit comes, he's just going to bring to your remembrance that you're supposed to walk in love. Everything. And again, I want you to notice something here, that Jesus keeps talking more about if we love God than about God loving us. God loving us is the understood. God's not commanded to love us. He loves us. But we're commanded to love him. And really, Jesus says it this way, if you love me. Now, what does it mean? If you love God, that's going to be an act of your heart. But if you love God, you're going to keep his word. You're going to keep his sayings. You're going to do like he asks you to do. You're going to live right if you love God. Now, if God's become your life preserver to keep you from going to hell, you, know, you can do that and not love God. Hello. I said, hello. Well, I don't go to church because there's a bunch of hypocrites there. Wait a second now. We're to love one another as Christ loved us. He loved Judas even up to the very end. He knew he was, and knew he was going to betray him. Hello. You get, you get Christians in inspection in our circles these days, if we agree, disagree doctrinally, boy, they get, they'll come after you. With, well, I mean, they'll, they'll cut your head off. Yeah, they'll get the stones out. They'll defriend you. They'll call you all kinds of names and all kinds of stuff. You're like, dear Lord. But Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So now we see there's, there's, a, there's a shift. He's come and shown the love of God. Now remember back in the very beginning of this book, <clears throat> one of his sermons was what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's, that's 10 chapters ago. This is probably three years earlier he's been, he's been preaching that sermon about the love of God. God loves them. God's love. God's love for them. God's love for them. Now he comes in an instruction and says, now you love God. And if you love God, do this. If you love God, then this is going to motivate. This is going to govern. This is going to direct. This is going to constrain you. This is going to take your path down certain ways. But all this power you got and all this anointing you got and all this, you know, uh, understanding you have is going to be used to do what? The works that Jesus did to minister to the hurting. What was it, and somebody may need to find this for me, that when John's disciples said and sent his disciples unto Jesus, when John sent his disciples unto Jesus and said, are ye who should come or should, or should we look for another? And John and Jesus looks to the disciples of John and says this, you go tell John that the lame walk, the blind see, and the poor had the gospel preached to them. Uh, there we go, Matthew eleven three. 
Art thou he should come, or should we look for another? Next verse 4. And Jesus answered, Go show John again these things which you do hear and see. Verse 5. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Amen. Amen. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now stop. Jesus didn't say a thing about his new donkey or his two-story house or his new wind-powered boat. He didn't say a thing about his possessions. He talked about the works that the Father was doing through him as proof of his calling and anointing. And then he tells his disciples later, and these kind of things, the blind receive their sight, the deaf hear, the lepers are cleansed, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. You're going to do that and greater because I'm going to the Father. And then he follows that up with, if you love me, keep my commandments, keep my word, keep my statutes, keep my doctrine, keep my teaching. That's kind of what we're really saying when we say commandments. If you love me, do this. And then he says, and I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you a... Now, the King James, for whatever reason, they decided that comforter was the word they wanted to use everywhere for paraclete. But the word carries different meanings. And really, uh, I, I, my margin of this particular, and this, my, this Bible says this, and he, and he shall give you another helper. I think that's probably more accurate uh, or, of, of the words here. I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you another helper. So what? The way the Father was in Jesus helping him, he's going to be in us helping us to do his works because we love him and want to what, restore humanity to, to the Father. Remember, go back to John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The heart of the Father is to save the lost. Jesus talks about doing the same works he did and then qualifies it with, and if you love me, keep my commandments. If you, how many know this? If you love someone, you're going to love what they love. Even if you wouldn't love it without, the, if they weren't there. If you wouldn't love, if they weren't there, you wouldn't love it, but because they love it, you love it. Hello? Now, my wife, when we met, did not love camping. Now, and I, and I understand. Her daddy, they, they had an old ragged pop-up that him and his brothers had bought and had it down at a place called Billy Kay's Campground, one of the rivers down in eastern Carolina. And it was covered in mold and mildew and all this kind of stuff. They go down there and go fishing. And see that they'd have to go and, you know, sleep in, in some of the most ridiculous situations because they were going camping at the river. And so we get married, and I grew up, we camped. I mean, my family camped. We would, we would, um, we tent camped, we RV camped, we, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and I loved, I was in the Boy Scouts, we camped. We, we camped in the old Army surplus tents with no floor in them. You had to get, when you got on site, you had to get and build dirt uh, dams around the bottom of the tent to divert water if it rained that night and put pine straw all in the bottom of the tent. And all that because it was no flooring. I mean, it was just dirt, you know. You had to sleep on roots. We didn't have air mattresses. Yeah, you, just, you know, you, if you were a tenderfoot, uh, you, you were on the roots. The first-class guys and the Eagles guys got the, the, the better ground. You know, they were going to make a ruffian out of you before the day was over. And uh, so I grew up camping, and we got married. We wanted to do some traveling. You know, we, we hadn't been married long. I said, I said well, let's, let's, uh, let's buy a tent and let's go camping. And she was not happy. She's like, oh, are you cray-cray? Didn't use that word back then, but, you know, it was kind of, are you crazy? And so we, we bought us a tent from uh, Sears, the old Hillary tents, which were some of the best tents that have ever been made for, for retail use sell. Um, they, they stopped making for some stupid reason. Uh, those tents, they were canvas with the big, thick canvas roofs. and they, I mean, they, they were awesome. 
And um, we bought us a tent, a little 8 by 10 cabin tent, and we went camping. And uh, our first trip, we went down to the uh, Holiday Travel Park at Emerald Isle, and we set up our tent, and, and I set up in a little gully, and one of them Eastern Carolina thunderstorms came up. I mean, and the ground is just got like a base cabinet from the lightning and thunder. And water, so that, that, when I say a little gully, I mean like this. They went right under our tent. At the bottom of this, this tent was going, all the water running under it. Then we stayed dry, praise the Lord, because, you know, because it was the, you know, the, uh, um, the flooring and the tent was, was uh, vinyl or whatever, you know, the, the tarp type material. And um, we're sitting, you know, and she fell in love with camp because I loved it. We, you know, got up and cooked breakfast on the, the stove outside and all this kind of stuff. I, I, we still have our original stove, our original lantern. Um, all that stuff. We, we bought that and we have it. I sold that tent because I wanted a bigger one. We, you know, and uh, Penny's had this two room cabin tent that was 10 by 16. I bought that and it was a dump. That's why I didn't buy, didn't buy anything else from Penny's. I took a camp and one time went to Cherokee. It rained the whole week. The tent poles rusted the first week. It leaked like a water faucet. We had to get up every morning and go to the, to the, to the, bat, to the, the laundry house on the campground and dry all of our sleeping bags and stuff because they were wet from the bleep, 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 bleep. Like, this is us. Took it back to, to, to the counter at JCPenney a catalog department in Greenville, North Carolina, threw it up on the counter, and I looked at the guy and said, I got a list of complaints as long as your arm. And he started writing up a return right then. Gave me money back. Went back this year and ordered the 10 by 16 Hillary. I still have it and still use it. 30 some years later, it still works. It's still, it's still a good tent. Um, but she fell in love with camping. Now, over the time, we got a pop up, you know, which we made it, you know, and we still got that tent feeling. Then we sold the pop up at the travel trailer down at the beach. And now we're kind of looking at maybe selling that and going back to a pop up or something because it's, you know, um, we don't do as much beach camping. You know, pop up at the beach on the front end with this, you know, it's 98 degrees and 110% humidity and, you know, heat index 107 is, is rough uh, in a pop-up. But, you know, <clears throat> we, we like, but we, she fell in love with camping because I loved it. And, it and, our, and our memories with our kids around the campfire and the s'mores and all that stuff over the years, they, they all remember that. And they all want to go camping with their families because it's special to them. And I said all that because she loved what I loved. At first, she didn't want to. She went and started camping by herself. <coughs> Are you here? If you, if she, had been, she wouldn't have been going around by herself going, hey, I'm going to start camping. Won't going to happen. Because, I, because she loved me, and it brought me pleasure. She fell in love with it. If we love God, what brings him pleasure? Receiving his own unto himself. People being born again. People coming out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. His love with the world was so great that he offered the only answer to remedy the rebellion and the sin nature of man, which was his own son, the only begotten of the Father. And if his heart is so great for the love of humanity to redeem them by the sacrifice of his son through the, the plan of redemption, should we not love God so much that our heart beats with his heartbeat for the loss and for the world? And if we love him, we'll keep his sayings. We're not going to be looking. And, 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 I, and I hope, and I, quite frankly, I believe that God the Father and the Holy Spirit and Jesus, the head of the church, are going to hold the ministers responsible for this immaturity and lack of whatever in the church. Because we preach things, and I say, I'm just going to throw me in here with it. We will preach things that get people to come into our churches, to buy our books, to buy our tape series, to bring all of this kind of money into the church at the expense of their maturing. Because, you know, we know a lot of times if you start teaching people stuff that's going to make them grow up, they don't want to hear it. Hello? Are you here? You go home. They can't give them zoo zoos and wham whams, as Randy Greer said. 
They can't get all that every time they come to, come to the table. Well, listen, if your kids came to the table every time wanted wanted chocolate ice cream and chocolate chip cookies and chocolate milk for every meal, and they threw a fit every time they didn't get it, you can't start serving that to them just to keep them coming to the table. You have to tell them, no, it's time to grow up. And if you're a good parent, you would have never fed them like that to start with. Maybe a snack occasionally or something just as a, you know, as, as, a, as a treat, but not how they live. They don't live that way. You have to give them things to make them grow and mature. And Jesus is saying, if you love me, you're going to keep my sayings. You're going to, keep what, you're going to do it the way I want it done. And I'll pray the Father, he'll give you another helper that he may abide with you ever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, the world cannot receive the Holy Ghost. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, or as the Greek would say, helpless. One of the words would be helpless. I will come to you. I'm going to get down to verse 21 and quit for, this, for today. Yet a little while the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Now, what the day of his resurrection and, and the, the new birth and all these things going on, all right? Verse t- um, 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Let's go on down to verse 24. Five. And Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Now notice he equates keeping his words and keeping his commandments as the same thing. Okay? He'll keep my words. My Father will love him. We'll, make, we'll come unto him and make our abode with him, or our dwelling place. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. Now, he's equated commandments, word, and sayings as the same thing. Okay? So when you're reading the Bible, don't, you know, people, well, there's only one commandment. Study. A little bit better than simply listening to what somebody else says. Are you here? You're going home. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, that being yet present with you. But the help, comforter or the helper, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, what, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, I'm going to stop with that, because what Jesus goes, is saying here is his words, his commandments, his sayings, what he said to them are his commandments. What we, we, we call times we'll call commandments. His doctrine. He said, if you love me, you're going to keep what I told you to do. You're not going to be going around saying, God loves me, I can do whatever I want to do. Because if you love him, you won't want to do things that dishonor him and displease him and bring reproach on the name of the Lord. If you love him, you'll deny yourself because you love him. I'm free. You're not that free. Hello? As a matter of fact, you're showing you love yourself more than you love God, which is a serious sign of immaturity. And, the, and, and our pastors, our ministers, you know, I know we're filling up stadiums and we're, we're selling millions of dollars worth of books and tapes and got huge ministries, and we, we can walk around in skinny jeans with bed head and look really cool with our Metro shirts on that look like a guy, you can't tell the guy from the girl when they're preaching, with their silky shirts hanging all over the place and their chest hair showing, which I don't care to see. And you got all the girls chasing after you and, and talking about how great your preacher are because they got the hots for you. Not because they, they're the anointing, not because of the anointing, they got the hots for you. And how dare you? What the Bible says about Jesus, there was no form nor comeliness that we should desire him. Was it because he was a GQ guy? Was it because he was the hottest thing on the supermarket, on the market for women? And men, if you're playing that and you're, you're doing it under the guise of ministry, shame on you. Because you're catering to the flesh of people and not bringing truth. Hello? Y'all hear you going home. It feeds your ego. 
And you'll, you'll, you'll preach, people will preach stuff to feed their ego instead of causing people to understand, I am a believer, and I am part of the body of Christ, and I, the body of Christ has a mission in the earth, and it's to reach the lost. And if I love God, I'm going to do like he wants me to do. And I'm going to live the way he wants me to live. I'm not going to run off and, and, and use the fact that he loves me no matter what as a cloak to live in violation of his wants and desires. Because I love him. Now let me know this. Marriage is a two-way street. You can love 100% if your spouse doesn't love you back 100%. It's not going to work. In the end, it will fail. Are you here? Both of you got to love 100%. It's not 50-50, it's 100-100. You're sold out to each other. In the end, it won't work. If you're just a taker, and the other one's just a giver, it's going to fail. Maybe you don't end up in divorce, but it failed. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Dr. Bill, can I get a slight amen? A deeper amen. There you go. There we go. I needed a brother Bill, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, we always want to have the narrative that God loves us. But Jesus' parting words to his disciples was, you're to love God. I knew when I started preaching this, I wasn't going to get any runners. It's amazing. When you, when you start preaching certain things, you get runners. Preach other things and don't nobody run. Nobody gets excited. Nobody shouts. Think about it. If we love God the way he loves us, shouldn't it thrill our hearts to please him, to honor him, to do his will? Think about it. Shouldn't we be as excited about ministering life to people because God loves them and we love them because God loves them as we are we got a new car? Well, got mighty quiet. We're, this is not the first church of the frozen chosen. Amen? And it is time to quit. Hallelujah. Running out of time here. All right. Praise the Lord. Y'all get blessed? All right. We'll pick up next week. Let, let me see here. Um, verse 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again. If ye loved me, you would rejoice. Because I said, I go to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it came to pass that when it, might come, that, that when it is come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. But the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go forth. And he continues teaching. We'll pick up that next week. Think about this. As the Father loved me, Amen. As the Father loved me, or as the Father gave me commandment, I did. Wait a second now. Jesus obeyed the Father. And I got people, I've seen them write, <clears throat> I don't have to obey, I don't have to give, I don't have to do this. Excuse me? You don't have to obey? Jesus said, as the Father gave me commandment, I do. I do it. The Bible says that he was obedient even unto death, the death of the cross. Even to the absolute giving of everything he had, he obeyed. And now we got people talking about, I don't have to give, I don't have to do, I don't have to do whatever, blah, 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 just go on and on and say stupid stuff because God loves me. But as the Father gave Jesus commandment, he did. And as Jesus has given us commandment, we do. And the Son of Man came not in the world but to uh, be ministered to, but to minister. And we now are not are sent into the world not to be ministered to, but to minister. Amen. Let's all stand up. We're going to receive the Lord's table.
Uh, if you can make sure you're positioned so that the ushers can get there in between and serve uh, the communion elements that represent the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, I know some of these things are you know, not always what we want to hear. They're not always easy to take. And or I'm preaching to the choir. Praise the Lord. Sometimes it's good to preach to the choir. Glory to God. The 11th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians ended up in there as a rebuke. Paul's not happy with how they're conducting themselves in the church. And Paul did not write to the church and go, uh, you're under grace. Go ahead and keep doing what you're doing because it doesn't matter. Boy, he, he scolded them for how they conducted themselves concerning the Lord's table. Now, King Jimmy can be flowery and dressy. If you take this into the original language and get more clear cut with it, he 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 runs him up. He he runs him up one wall down the other. I mean, he he is not happy with how their behavior is, and he rebukes them, and I mean, he cleans their clock, and tells them that some of them are dead because of how they've been acting. That doesn't go over real good with some of the things narratives, does it? He said, for this cause men are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, the word sleep there, it means dead. People died because they were, mis they were mis misusing and misrepresenting uh, uh, and misappropriating the Lord's table. This is, Jesus said, a remembrance meal. Think of the people who had started the church and ministered the church and, and the revelation they had. And you know the teachings of Jesus from that last meeting about loving one another. People know you're my disciples because you have love one for another. And they come in here and the rich people are getting drunk and the poor people don't even have anything to eat at these love feasts they were calling them. And Paul said, when you come together, it's not to receive the Lord's table. For some has something, and others don't have anything. And, and, get, and he says this, and, and King James uses a certain way of doing Paul's rhetorical statements. He says, and should I praise you in this? I praise you not. That's kind of like, and you want me to pat you on the back? Are you stinking kidding me? Your behavior stinks. You're in the church, and you're not loving one another. You're not acting the way that God wants you to act. I received instruction of the Lord. The night that he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Hello? Take, eat it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do it in remembrance of me. <coughs> they, were, they were acting like a bunch of jerks at the very meal that became the Lord's Supper or the, the covenant meal between the church and the Lord where we to remember how Jesus acted. And they're acting in ways that are diametrically opposed to how he acted. Now, in today's narratives, they would be praised for acting that way because they're under grace and they're, they're free in their thinking. They're liberated in how they think. And Paul's not praising them. He's crawling their case and then reminds them of why we come together and that when we forget that, you got people who are sick and are dead because they didn't remember why the church is here and what I came for and why my blood was shed. You've forgotten. And people are dying and people are dead and people are sick because of it. Now get your act together. Are you here? He went, and he says there, verse 28, let a man examine himself so that he eats that bread and drinks that cup 
unworthily. He that eateth and drinketh unworthily drinketh condemnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Verse 31, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Now, I don't know who he's talking to because he can't be talking to people in the church today because we don't get judged. He says here, when we stop acting like Jesus, when we stop, when we forget why we're here, we're going to get judged. And when we stop walking in love and living like Jesus and walking in the love of God one to another, so that people know we are his disciples. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican or Libertarian or you know, whatever you are. You, if you're a Christian, and I mean a serious, you're born again, not just you join the church. We have to love one another. That has to supersede politics. To the degree that the world can see our harmony in the kingdom of God. So Paul reminds them that Jesus said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And then he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. And then Paul went on and said, <clears throat> Hallelujah. I'm thinking, God, it's not an alcoholic. <laughs> Woo! After the same manner also he took the cup. When he said, this cup is New Testament, my blood is, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. We're reminded. Until he comes back, we're reminded of why he went to the cross. We're reminded the purpose of his coming. We're reminded of his new commandment that we love one another as he loved us. Amen? That the love walk is now the defining, the defining characteristic of the church. Not our great faith. I'm a faith preacher, folks. I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to stop preaching faith. I'm saying that we have to make the defining factor, not how big of a car we got and how big our faith is and what we can get with our faith, but love. Amen. Amen. We can still teach faith, still teach people how, how we receive things because we believe God and he honored his word. And, you know, I mean, I get that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even close to saying let's st stop doing that. But if the motivating factor, the motivating factor of our faith is love, then we should be we should be walking in love. We should be love people. Amen. We should be people of love. Glory to God. Amen. And stop acting like the world. Are y'all here? You go home. All right. We love y'all. And so we say, if you love Jesus, keep his commandments, keep his doctrine, keep his word, keep his sayings, keep his teachings. Amen? Until we see you again, God bless you. Amen.